Us now to talk more about the games in Rio is Jules Boykoff. He's a lecturer on politics at Pacific University in Oregon. Thank you very much for your time. Jules, we saw a few moments ago um, protests in Rio against the Olympics. What are people unhappy with? Well, I was at those protests that you were describing before, and people are unhappy with a wide range of issues. For starters, what you were discussing in regards to the number of uh, the number of dollars being spent on these Olympics, uh, that could be spent on other things such as health care, such as hospitals that are being closed. And so there's a real gap between priorities in this city, and a lot of people are quite aware of them. Another big issue for protesters yesterday who I talked to was the displacement. A lot of people have lost their homes since 2009 when Rio was awarded the Olympics to make way for Olympic structures, transport networks, and so on. So people aren't very happy about that. Some 77,000 people have been displaced since 2009. And of course, there's also the militarization of public space, and that was on full display yesterday at that protest, where there was basically a police envelope that encircled the protest at all times. Police moved around in sort of intimidating fashion in different formations and uh, really had a strong role even on horses yesterday at that event. How many people are there at these protests? How many people are taking to the streets? And, and on the whole in Rio, are the games actually being welcomed? Well, on the whole in Rio, if we believe the public opinion data, about two-thirds of the people who were polled recently thought that the games would do more harm than good. I think there's a certain number of people around who have sort of resigned themselves to the reality that it's here and figure you might as well try to enjoy it as much as possible, which for most people means watching it on TV because they can't afford to get tickets. But in terms of the, the protests, there were really two large protests yesterday. One was down on Copacabana Beach where there was an anti Tamer, Michel Tamer, the current interim president of Brazil, and a Fora Tamer protest, uh, Tamer out. There were thousands and thousands of people there of all political backgrounds, uh, union workers, feminists, anti-Olympics people. And that was a huge festive throng, a lot of red shirts being worn and so on. In the protest in the afternoon that was more focused on the Olympics, slightly smaller numbers, I would estimate about a thousand or so were there. And uh, so that you saw smaller numbers, but uh, a lot more militant kind of approach to the things. And when you were talking before about the flag that was being burnt, that was really a small element in the larger protest that was peaceful and proceeded at a, at a perfect uh, clip. Has the, uh, the infrastructure investment that Rio has seen in the last couple of years, has that helped the poorer communities in any way? Hmm. Well, it's been a mixed bag. I mean, a lot of people who analyze the transport structures here have pointed out that the new lines have sort of cannibalized the previous lines and that, in fact, the priority really should be connecting people in the north part of the city, many of whom come to the south zone, where I am right now, to work during the day and have a long haul back. There have been some improvements. Uh, for example, I'd say the major one is in the Linea Quattro extension, the metro extension that goes from the south zone out to the western part of the city where the Olympics are happening. There's a stop on that route in Hosinia, which is the largest favela in Rio. So after the games, people will be able to use that there, and people in Hosinia will have one more way to get around. I might point out, though, that right now, during the actual Olympics, everyday cariocas, everyday residents of Rio, are actually not allowed on the metro train. It's reserved right now for Olympic honchos, for athletes, medics, and people who are associated with the Olympics, such as Olympic corporate sponsors, as well as media. So after the Olympics, that could be a benefit for the people of Hosinia. But most people that I talk to around here who analyze the transport networks say that the Olympics could have brought a lot more for the everyday person in this town. Okay, uh, Jules Boykoff, thank you very much for talking to us.